Well, it turns out that a psychedelic that's been known about for many years may finally get to go through a clinical trial so that it can receive FDA approval so that it no longer will be illegal for us to access it in the United States. Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of You and Me and Multiple Sclerosis. My name is Pam, and I've been living with MS for 40 years. Before we get started on our video today, I just wanted to take a minute and let you know that given that today is June 16th, and I'm posting this so that it will appear tomorrow, June 17th, and June 20th, just a few more days from now, I'm going to be undergoing that cancer removal surgery that I had told you about earlier. So I would really appreciate it if you would keep me in mind on that day in your prayers or your thoughts or good wishes, whatever. It's going to be a tricky surgery, but I'm confident I've got a good surgeon. So I hope that I will be back soon to continue. But in the meantime, I have, by the way, published a number of videos in, into July so that I will not miss my regular schedule. And hopefully by the time I need to post another video, I'll be back and able to do so. But anyway, okay, so here we are looking at something called Ibogaine, which has been around for quite a long time, or at least been known about for quite a long time. And there are actually several treatment facilities in Mexico where a person could access this drug. Its origins are in Africa, and again, it's been known about for a long time. But once in a while, some alternative therapy actually proves itself to the point where the powers that be decide we better do the right thing and get a clinical trial going and whatnot. And so let's look at the article together and then we'll look at some of the new developments going on in the state of Texas. Because as, as so often is the case, the impetus for studying a certain compound, it might help MS, but MS is not the main reason why people get excited about it. And in the case of this compound, it has many other applications, among them being the breaking of certain addictions and the, and the relief of PTSD. So let's find out more about that. And again, I saw this article in Multiple Sclerosis News Today. It was published on June 13th of 2025. Ambio's Ibogaine Therapy Program targets MS and other conditions. Naturally occurring psychedelic eyed as potential supportive treatment. Ambio Life Sciences has launched a clinical program to test Ibogaine, an experimental naturally occurring psychedelic for neurodegenerative conditions such as multiple sclerosis. The program aims to offer therapeutic support in a safe, medically supervised setting. Now open to the public following a soft launch earlier this year, this neuroregenerative program is designed for patients considering Ibogaine as part of their care strategy. It has already treated 30 patients in a dedicated treatment facility. In addition to MS, the program is available for people with Parkinson's disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or better known as Lou Gehrig's disease maybe in my generation, stroke, traumatic brain injury, and other conditions. The goal is to explore Ibogaine as a potential supportive treatment. So in other words, not as a cure, but as a supportive treatment, something that would perhaps alleviate symptoms and be used in conjunction with some kind of DMT to treat MS, but again, not a cure. We're creating a safe structured environment for people with these conditions to explore Ibogaine, and we could be on the cusp of uncovering how Ibogaine may support brain healing in ways we don't fully understand today. Jonathan Dickinson, Ambio's CEO and co-founder, said in a company press release. They say that lesion volume was reduced and symptoms were eased in two patients. 
In MS, damage to the brain and spinal cord results in a wide range of symptoms, including vision problems, poor coordination and balance, fatigue and pain. Available treatments can prevent new damage from occurring and slow down the progression of disease, but they generally cannot help patients regain lost functions. So I'm not sure, again, if they were talking about it as a supportive therapy. Now they're implying that it could actually help regain lost functions. So I'm, now I'm really curious. Ibogaine, currently illegal in the United States, is a psychedelic found in the root bark of the African iboga plant. It works by acting on receptors, for example, NMDA and opioid receptors, that play a role in, bl in brain activity. Ibogaine also increases the production of molecules that help nerve cells survive and form new connections. Okay, so now we're getting a little better idea of what it actually can do to help MS. They say that in a recent report, Ibogaine reduced lesion volume and eased symptoms of MS in two patients, one with relapsing remitting MS and the other with secondary progressive MS. Following treatment, both patients also showed signs of improvement on brain scans suggestive of new connections between nerve cells and rewiring of brain circuitry. Well, that is quite interesting. As both a clinician and an MS patient, I've experienced the complexity of these conditions and the limitations of traditional treatments, Lindsay Ryan, Ambio's chief therapy officer, said. The relief some patients are reporting so far is motivating, including improvements in eyesight, mobility, and neuropathic pain. And those are symptoms many of us are dealing with right now. So that's encouraging news. In Ambia's program, a loading dosing is optimized for tolerability, followed by extended microdosing or taking very small doses. Weekly group sessions offer ongoing support through and beyond the treatment period. In addition to providing safe access to Ibogaine, the company will also collect real-world data. While the program does not promise a cure, it gives patients a chance to participate in an emerging therapy that could support better quality of life and provide insights for further research. Well, okay, so anything that improves our quality of life, it's kind of like it helps us endure the, the waiting with a little more patience. So again, that might be quite useful and quite interesting. Every participant is helping us learn what's possible, said Ryan, who is also the program's lead therapist. And they say that Ibogaine relieved the MS hug for one patient. Country music artist Clay Walker and NFL Hall of Famer Brett Favre were among the first to try the program. Both were diagnosed with neurodegenerative diseases, Walker with MS in 1996, and Favre with Parkinson's in early 2024. I was told about Ibogaine from a friend who completed the treatment and was blown away by the results, said Favre. Since coming to Ambio, I felt a real shift, especially in my sleep and energy. Walker shared a similar experience. My journey with Ibogaine was extraordinary, Walker said. It relieved what we call the MS hug, that painful tightness in the abdomen, and gave me clarity, focus, and real relief from stress. My hope is that Ibogaine can one day complement the treatments MS patients already rely on. Ambio is working with Dalhousie University in Halifax, Canada to explore how Ibogaine works in people with neurodegenerative diseases, namely how it impacts biomarkers of neuroinflammation and disease models of Parkinson's, MS, and stroke. This work may help define what Ibogaine treatments for neurodegenerative diseases could look like in the future, Dickinson said. Even if we don't fully know what shape that will take yet, preclinical research and each patient's experience brings us closer to understanding how Ibogaine may support neuro-repair. Okay, pretty interesting stuff, I have to say. And I would point out to you that this is not a new thing. Folks have known about Ibogaine for a long time and they've been looking at it, although 
As I went out to see, I could see that there have been no clinical trials using Ibogaine. And that's kind of interesting in and of itself. I know that because it's a psychedelic, a lot of the mainline science is just kind of avoiding it for whatever reason. But it sounds like we might actually start to see that change because of some things that have gone on in Texas right now. I want to thank everybody for joining with us uh, for this very important signing ceremony here today. Definitely want to thank Speaker Burroughs for his leadership on this issue as well as so many others. Uh, and also uh, thank Senator Tam Parker, Parker for his leadership in, in the Senate on this bill as well as the Cyrus Command that we signed last week and again so many others. Maybe most importantly, I, I want to thank uh, the people who are surrounding us right now. Uh, many women who have been advocates for the cause that I'm about uh, to sign a law about. Uh, their lives have been touched, affected, harmed in some ways, uh, and they have been looking for a pathway, a therapy, a treatment, a way to deal with and grapple with and have a better pathway in their lives by an alternative, an alternative that the some were able to find on their own an alternative that we believe should be tested and evaluated for the possibility of achieving FDA approval. To understand the context, Texas is home to more veterans than any other state of the United States of America. Many of those veterans suffer from so many different types of injuries, both seen and unseen. Many struggle with things like depression, PTSD, and opioid use disorder. The same is true for some of our first responders as well as others who are dealing with addiction-based issues. A therapy that has shown great promise in treating those conditions is Ibogaine. To better understand the potential for Ibogaine and to better address the public health challenges caused by things like opioid use disorder, an FDA clinical drug trial is needed for Abigail. I'm about to sign a law that will lead to an FDA-approved drug development clinical trial that will seek approval of Abigail as a medication for the treatment of opioid use disorder and other behavioral health conditions, especially so those suffered by our veterans. Texas will invest $50 million to support this research, and these funds can be matched by grants and private investments. I'm proud to sign it into law. Texas is now leading the way in the United States for the evaluation of Ibogaine as a potential medication that can help improve the lives of so many Americans. It's now law. Speaker Burroughs. Before this session began, I had heard of Ibogaine, and probably like many of the House members and senators, um, knew a little bit about it. You know, I was not convinced about what it could do or what it could not do, but because of the powerful testimony that we heard, something everyone needs to remind, remember, <clears throat> when you actually hear from people and people come to these chambers, it makes an impact. It makes a difference. And we heard story after story of people who went and got treatment, credible actors, and felt it had improved their lives. Whether it was an opioid addiction or other issues they were dealing with, it made an impact. And slowly, as session went on, the members of the Texas House, members of the Senate, began to agree that this was worth the next step. It was worth investing in and making sure in seeing if we could do something to bring this to more people. I want to thank Governor Abbott for his leadership on this, Senator Parker, the Lieutenant Governor, Cody Harris in the House, many of the people, and especially those behind us, who were some of the most powerful actors that brought this into existence today. So I'm excited about today. I'm more excited about these trials and what's going to come from them, and hopefully, and hopefully 
the relief that provides to so many affected members and people who need this therapy. Thank Senator. you. Now, Senator Tam Parker. Well, what an honor to be here today. Thank you, Governor, for your leadership and signing this in the law. I want to thank uh, Speaker Burroughs and the Lieutenant Governor for his great support, uh, the Lieutenant Governor's staff, uh, Savannah Mann on my team, uh, the incredible folks behind us here, Brian Hubbard and so many other veterans that provided amazing testimony throughout this entire process. This is about restoration. This is about the opportunity to restore the lives of so many veterans that have put their lives on the line for all of us that literally have put their lives on the line for all those years, and they've suffered as a result tremendously. And so the promise that Ibogaine provides, we think is very significant. It is not just a chemical improvement that on a short-term basis, it is structural. It is an increase in neuroplasticity uh, and all the data that we have seen up to this point. So we're incredibly excited to take this step. There's nothing more important than protecting our veterans and our public at large. This will have benefits for everyone if the clinical trial is successful, as we believe it will be. Uh, we pray for that. Uh, we're excited about this process. Uh, and again, think about what the impact will be, the lives that can be saved and restored because of this amazing, amazing breakthrough potentially here with Ibogaine. So again, I want to thank uh, the governor and the lieutenant governor and the speaker, all the incredible champions, all the folks in the veterans community that have come up to us and shared passionately their personal stories. It made an enormous difference on me, uh, and taking it seriously, getting into the science, understanding that this needed to move forward. And of course, I want to thank my good friend and partner in the House, Cody Harris. Our prayers with him and his family uh, for all they've endured here personally as well recently. Uh, but again, this is a great day for Texas, a great day for our vets, a great day for people that care about mental health. Uh, it will also have enormous implications, I think, long term for all kinds of various neurological conditions as well. And so we look forward to that day. Uh, when we're able to really provide meaningful relief to the people of Texas that suffer from so many of these conditions that Ibogaine will improve their lives uh, and being uh, a great solution for. So, again, what a great day, and thank you, Governor, for your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I guess what we have to say is that we are thankful that Texas is leading the charge on this and that there will be a clinical trial, we hope, that will come out the other end. We don't know that for sure, but we certainly hope so, because it would be nice to have yet another FDA-approved treatment in our arsenal. And this one actually looks like it might do more than just treat symptoms, which is what I was thinking at first it was going to do. But they're talking about the increase in neuroplasticity and certain other brain changes, structural changes, that might actually help us not cure MS, but certainly alleviate some of the things that we have to live with and maybe make some of them just go away for good. I think that would be great. <laughs> I'm really hoping that it will work out. We'll keep on top of this. I'll let you know if there are any other developments, but this is pretty close to breaking news, and so I'm glad to be able to share it with you. And while we wait for all these treatments to finally make the big time, you know what we need to do. We need to take really good care of ourselves, right? So that we can benefit from these treatments when they become available. But until that happens, and until my next video, do keep taking really good care of yourself, and I will see you again soon. Mm -hmm.